So it's been a couple months since posting my last 43X MOS upgrades video, and I wanna go through a couple things that I've changed and also share a couple things that I've tried that didn't really work out for me that will hopefully save you from wasting some money. If you haven't watched them yet, make sure you go and watch my first two 43X videos so you can see the progress of this build, because even though they're old and cringy, I'll probably answer most of your questions that you have throughout those two videos. The most current build can be found on my kit page on my website gunmanusa.com under the latest build title. So first things first, I've been asked this question probably a hundred times since posting my latest 43X build. Is hockey tape the same thing as goon tape? Well, I have both and the simple answer is they are basically the same, but here's a couple things to think about. First and most important, who would you rather support? A random hockey tape manufacturer or a 2A supporting company? Second, if the goon tape is out of stock, which it commonly is, and you can't find it anywhere, will hockey tape pass? In my opinion, yes, there are minor differences. First off, the hockey tape I got is slimmer in width, and it's just barely not as thick as the goon tape. Somehow it's like a little more transparent when you hold it up to the light, but honestly, just wrap another layer and it's the exact same look and feel. So there you go, the hockey tape that I got right here is linked in the kit. Now onto the actual build, starting with probably the most obvious change, I'm now running John Johnny Glock's newly released combat trigger system called the Vex. When I originally wrote this script a couple weeks ago, I said I would have preferred the original Evo trigger system I was running in my last video, but after putting quite a few rounds downrange with this system, it's actually growing on me way more than I thought it would. It is insanely smooth as Johnny Glock's are, and it's a very comfortable trigger. I do still personally love the feel of a flat face versus a more standard trigger, and when I say standard, it's because though the shoe is flat, it has curved edges in comparison to the Evo. So it's just a little bit smoother when you hold it. But I will say again, that does add to its comfortability and it's actually one of the main reasons I'm not going back to the Evo. Keep in mind though, I haven't had a ton of range time with it yet, so I'll be sure to make an update video with my thoughts after I shoot over 2000 rounds. Right now about 600 rounds in though, I really do like it. You might be wondering if you're going to purchase, should I go with a full firing pin and plunger add-ons or should I just get the lower trigger system? As someone who's tried both, the answer is pretty subjective. Personally, I love just the lower trigger system because I prefer the heavier weight of the OEM firing pin spring. But if you want the absolute smoothest and lightest shooting experience with still a safe trigger weight, then the full trigger kit is the way to go. I've just personally found when I'm training like dry fire situations with the full slide kit installed, sometimes I press the trigger accidentally while attempting to sit on the wall. So it's just a little too light for me and the way I train. Though I'm sure if you're used to light triggers, that won't be a problem and you'll love it. I just personally like to be able to sit on the wall with a good amount of pressure before I fully press and take my shot. And that's mostly because I train with a variety of guns all at different weights. And so when I move to a lighter trigger system, sometimes my finger is just not trained to sit on a light wall. So I naturally press a little bit harder. The bottom line is I really don't think you can go wrong when it comes to choosing either package. You're going to get a great value out of either one. The next thing you may have noticed is I covered my hollow sun with this thing called a ranger wrap. I've been trying forever to figure out a good way to cover up the logos without paint or Cerakote and I came across these guys. So far I can totally recommend this route. Huge fan of the materials, they're laser cut to fit perfectly and this is just the black version but they have a bunch of different colors. So there's an easy solution if you want to go the same route without any permanent changes. Previously as you know I was running the XS DX2 Big Dot iron sights and I really did love them on on this build and I still do as I have them on both my Glock 45 and my Glock 19. Their sights are great but after seeing a ton of comments wondering if on this build they co-witnessed with my Holosun which the big dots don't and they really barely saw over my Holosun I realized that maybe I wanted something that actually did. I did some research and I found these sights from Night Vision that offer a lower thirds co-witness with both the Holosun and they have a separate model if you're running an RMRCC. Here's the difference in height when you're looking at both models. The taller ones are obviously for the Trijicon RMR CC and the ones I have on are obviously designed for the Holosun 507K. I am so stoked on these. I honestly just didn't know what I was missing out on as there's very few options of, of optic height sights for the 43X MOS so I was happy to find these. And I wouldn't say that these are suppressor height. They're definitely just made for the optic itself but they do assist in getting everything lined up and my Holosun takes care of seeing over the suppressor. So far they are great quality 
quality, the install process is much more complicated than XS, but it does result in a tighter fit. So I do recommend taking them to a pro to have them installed for you if you're not very familiar with installing sites. I just took mine to my local gun shop and they had it done in a day for like 20 bucks. Of course, the sites I was running previously, the DX2 big dots were way brighter, even in normal daylight. With the night vision, they glow really well at night, but be aware if you go with these, which are the full green tritium, you will not be able to see the tritium in the day at all. They're almost blackout sites in the day with tritium at night, and I honestly kind of like it. But if you want some more visibility, you can go with their orange or yellow front ring. Anyway, huge, huge fan of these. The co-witness looks great. It's extremely easy to get on target, and they're just incredible sites so far. I'm a huge fan. Now, if you watched my original 43X video, you know that when I first tried to run the shield mags, I had countless jamming issues. Eventually, I couldn't even get through a single mag without running into jams. So I threw the S15 mags under the bus after watching a bunch of negative videos on YouTube and talking to shield after sending the mags in twice with no solution to the jams. So I decided to get rid of them and go back to OEM. After I posted my last 43X updates video, I got comment after comment wondering why I wasn't using the S15 mags, and well, that's why. I had a really crappy experience with them, and I'm definitely not gonna run something that's unreliable. I wanted to give them another chance with one last idea in mind that I hadn't tried yet. Turns out all I needed to do was shorten the screw on the right side of my hollow sun because somehow it was messing with my extractor. If you purchase the CHP WS mounting plate for the 507K, it will actually come with the two screws that you need to mount it, already with one shorter than the other. After making that switch, the mags now run perfectly reliably so far. I'll definitely keep you posted if I run into any issues at all, but they're flawless. Right now I'm carrying with the flush mag in the gun and the plus five extension as my backup mag. This was the best way for me to reduce the printing while still carrying plenty of rounds. I also picked up their premium steel mag catch in DLC. I went with the premium one because apparently it sits just a little bit higher, which I liked. And it's apparently made right and left hand specific, which makes the loading smoother, so they say. It's not super noticeable to me, and I've had both catches, so unless you need or want the added height, you can probably just go with your normal mag catch, no problem. But I do really like this one. So yeah, my dreams are finally coming true with the S15 mags because now I've finally built out the perfect concealed carry system, and I'm just so stoked that the mags are finally working for me. I just remember being so jealous and frustrated that they were working in other people's guns, but they weren't working in mine. So yeah, anyway, figured it out. Now for the thing that I tried and had had so many issues with, it's led me to hate it. I did this with both my Glock 19 and this build, and I talked about it a little bit in my Glock 19 video. Learn from my experience and do not put metal, aluminum, or anything other than a polymer mag release button in your gun unless you're running metal mags. Polymer to polymer, metal to metal. What happened was I was trying to find an extended mag release button that I liked, and I did find one from Hive Technologies, which at first I absolutely loved. It was on Honestly perfect until it started eating my polymer mags. Then over a hundred dollars in replacing mags later, I finally realized why my mags would just fall out randomly when I was shooting. <laughs> if you're running anything other than polymer on polymer, it will chip away the catch on your mags and eventually it won't be able to hold, causing the mag to slip out sometimes even when the first round is fired. This was a super annoying and expensive learning experience, but I'm just glad that I figured it out because it was driving me crazy. So that's the quick update. I'm I'm gonna start ending my videos in the future with something relating to a call to action in regards to training and becoming more proficient at preserving and protecting life and your individual rights. I want you to understand that one of the main reasons I got into guns was because I developed a deep desire to be able to protect my family, my own life, and others if a crappy situation presented itself. I did not want to be left defenseless or at the mercy of somebody else with a gun. One of my core beliefs is that because we were given by God inalienable rights. I can't even say that. Inal inalienable. You one of them being to keep and bear arms, we should utilize that gift and take full advantage of the responsibility of becoming familiar with firearms and what they are capable of. The reality is guns aren't going anywhere. Everybody knows there are a ridiculous amount in America. So your best course of action would be to learn as much as you can, train hard, and be your own best defense against those who wish to do evil. So to that, I wish you the absolute best in your training. Always remember, again, you are your own best defense. I implore you to train often with people who are better than you so you can improve. Let's be prepared to save lives. Until next time.